Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy back at today with another fantasy football video. Right here we got the week 6 tight ends to start or sit in every single matchup. I go through every single matchup from Thursday night to Monday night in order for you guys to have the best success in the tight end position. Now before I start the video, I'd like to ask if you guys could go down below and click that subscribe button because not only is going to help me, it's also going to help you guys dominate your fantasy football season. And also I'd like to give you guys a word from my sponsor, OverlayDFS.com. They're a great website. I plan it every single week. It is a load of fun. Come play with me. Check out the role now. Are you tired of having to pick the perfect player at every single position in order to win on salary cap DFS? Are you tired of having your salary cap lineup out of the running to win that money in the first five minutes of the games? Does playing salary cap DFS feel like a job and not even a game? Want a fantasy game where pros with 150 lineups and computer generated programs can't dominate? OverlayDFS.com has a new revolutionary start sit game for fantasy sports. They're the home of the single entry GPP. How do you play? Like I said, it's a simple start sit format you make 12 start sit decisions from the 30 plus matchups presented like you can see on my screen right now for week six a win loss or tie will be awarded to your overall record for each decision you make records in the top 10 percent of users win nine times your buy-in 12 and 0 records win gtd progressive bonus all matchups are player versus player who will have the most total fantasy points usually eight and four records are good enough to get that cash sometimes seven and five other times nine and three depending on the week you make 12 picks in the matchups options listed for example for week six it could be pat mahomes versus deshaun watson baker mayfield versus andy dalton dalvin cook versus alvin Kamara, and many many more the object is to stay consistent and finish in the top 10 percent of the field to win nine times your buy-in until the stars align and you go that beautiful 12 and 0. Right now, if you go a perfect 12 and 0 in the $109 game, you'll win the progressive bonus of over $26,000. They have buy-ins at all levels. If no one hits the per perfect 12 and 0 record of the progressive bonus, keeps growing and go growing and growing until it gets hit. It's like the super contest, but for DFS. Don't get shut out. Visit www.overlaydfs.com com today and we are bike week six tight ends to start or sit let's get into the thursday night matchup here we have the giants at the patriots now evan ingram is going to be out evan ingram is not going to play so i would advise just sitting every single tight end in this game some people are going to try to get try try and fucking be a little cheeky you know as they say in england or wherever they say that they're going to try and get a bit fancy and play one of these patriots tight ends they're going to go with matt lacoste they're going to go with ben watson they're going to think that they are super sneaky you're not going to try to go super sneaky you're going to go basic and you're going to avoid that in dfs you're going to see people go crazy on ben watson you're going to see it and they're going to be wrong i think we just sit every single tight end in this game and straight away from this game at the tight end position next game to talk about here is the Panthers at the Buccaneers over there in London now we're going to be starting both tight ends in this English bout the bout in England London the UK all that jazz we're going to be starting up Greg Olson for the Panthers now Greg Olson has been okay recently now he was playing great with Cam playing okay with Kyle Allen I think he's in for a good matchup this week the Buccaneers defense while a lot of people believe that they're super good or super okay you know Todd Bowles is over there figuring his shit out unlike when he was on the Jets but I think that Greg Olson will be in for a good game Kyle Allen is going to need to air the ball out a decent amount the Buccaneers defense has not been the best at against the quarterback position I think Kyle Allen should be in for a good game and I think that Greg Olson should also be in for a good name now OJ Howard on the Buccaneers. This is kind of a a bit of a crazy play because OJ Howard hasn't really done all that much this season. Now, you drafted him highly. You paid the price and he has not showed up. OJ Howard has not looked that good. Now, I would play him this week. I don't see him being a top 5 guy, a top 10 guy. He's probably a number 11 or 12th ranked guy, but I do think at the end of the day, he will be worth your start and that's why I have him up here on the start column. Now, the next game to talk about here is the Redskins at the Dolphins. This game may end up being a certified blood bath or just the most low scoring and most boring game ever I'm not sure who's going to be watching this as a Dolphins fan I'm not even going to watch this but I would be starting Vernon Davis now Vernon Davis is healthy the health is a concern now if uh, you're fucking watching
watching this on Sunday and Vernon Davis is laying in his bed and not in anywhere near the stadium in Miami, go ahead. Don't play Vernon Davis. But right now, I think if Vernon Davis is healthy, the Dolphins defense has not looked that good. I think Vernon Davis will be able to expose the Dolphins defense this week. And I really like Vernon Davis. Now I'm going to be sitting down Mike Gesicki, Licky on my iffy, uh, you know what I'm saying? Licky on my stiffy, uh, as 6 9 would say. Now Mike Gesicki has not been that terrible this season. But at the end of the day, do you really want to start Mike Gesicki? Do you really want to roll him out there against the Redskins, whose defense may just lock them up completely? I'm just going to stay away from Gesicki just like I have all season. Now, next game to talk about here is the Saints at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Gardner Minshew versus Teddy B. I'm going to be starting up Jared Cook in this game. Now, Jared Cook, just like O.J. Howard, has been a huge disappointment this season. He has just been god-awful, but last week, he looked pretty good. He got in the end zone. This week, against the Jaguars, I believe he may end up in the end zone, but he may also just get the ball, get the ball thrown his way, get you 70 yards, and you feel happy that you started Jared Cook. He's obviously not going to be top five guy this week, but I do believe he can finish in the top 12 this week, making him a start. And we're going to be sitting down the Jaguars tight ends. James O'Shaughnessy of the uh, Irish descent has ended up being hurt. He looks like he's out for the season potentially. I'm not really sure, but I know he's not playing in this game, and I know that you're not going to be starting any of these other Jaguars tight ends. Next game here is the Bengals at the Baltimore Ravens. AFC North matchup. All love is lost, as they like to say. The rule book is out the window. The stat books are out the window, as they like to say. I'm going to be starting Mark Andrews in this game. Mark Andrews started off this season phenomenal. Blew through every fucking defense. Looked amazing. Now, the last couple of weeks, he's been so-so. But I think this week, he's going to have a big, big, big game against the Bengals. Put the fucking mortgage on it. Mark Andrews may be the number one tight end this week. The Bengals defense couldn't stop me. Put me out there, coach. Mr. Harbaugh, put me in the game. I could score against this trash Bengals defense. I think Mark Andrews is in for a big game. And we are going to be sitting Tyler Eifert. Now, Tyler Eifert, the Ravens have not been all that good at stopping the tight end. But at the end of the day, I think that Tyler Eifert will not have that great game. If he doesn't touch the end zone, you are not going to want to start him. And I do not believe this week against the Ravens, he touches the end zone. I don't think many players on the Cincinnati Bengals even have potential to touch the end zone. We got the Seahawks at the Browns. Now, I'm going to be starting up Will Disley in this game. Will Disley has played phenomenal this season ever since his name has been called upon by Coach Carroll. I think Will Disley is in for a pretty big week this week against the Browns. The Browns looked terrible last week against the 49ers. Will they look better against Seattle? Potentially. Will Will Disley be able to score? Probably. Will Disley has been a top five, top six guy in my rankings every single week. I have the utmost confidence in him. Russell Wilson really loves throwing the ball his way, and he could potentially always come down with that touchdown, so I like Will Disley to start this week against the Browns. And we're going to be seeing down Ricky Seals-Jones, Mr. RSJ. I don't think the Browns are have been playing all that well. Now, RSJ did end up scoring two weeks ago, but this week against, against Seattle, I'm not super ultra confident in RSJ, so he is a sit for me, especially with the Browns offense not looking too dangerous. Next game here is the Eagles at the Minnesota Vikings. Now, we are going to be starting Zach Ertz in this game. Zach Ertz is obviously a guy you drafted highly, a highly touted guy in the fantasy community. You obviously are going to play him this week against the Vikings. Now, the Vikings defense has been pretty good, but I think Zach Ertz, who found the end zone last week, will be able to perform this week against the Vikings. Zach Ertz has been obviously one of Carson Wentz's favorite targets. I think he's going to get a lot of use in this game against the Vikings. So we're going to be seeing down Kyle Rudolph. Now, Kirk Cousins hasn't really been finding Kyle Rudolph all that often. I really only, the only guy I really like starting on the Minnesota Vikings this week is Kirk and Adam Thielen. I have no confidence in, uh, and obviously Dalvin Cook, but I don't have any other confidence in any of the other wideout options of the tight ends. So I would just sit Kyle Rudolph in this game. Now the Texans at the Chiefs is another game where I think you would have been able to start one of these Texans tight ends had Aikens not have gotten hurt. I am going to be starting Travis Kelsey in this game. Obviously, first round, second round pick. Obviously has been playing, not uh, up to his expectations, but has been playing okay. And he's going to be in for a good game against the Texans this week. A game that I could see having a super high point total. Now, you do obviously have to submerge your expectations, lower them down a bit for Travis Kelsey. If Pat Mahomes is still dealing with that ankle injury, you could clearly see last week against the Colts that it was hindering it. Hindering him, it was slowing him down. But I think this week against the Texans, he should be in for a higher scoring matchup for Travis Kelsey. Next game on the slate is the Falcons at the Arizona Cardinals. Now I'm going to be starting up Austin Hooper in this game. Hoop God has been balling 
out of control. Okay, guys, he has been playing great. It seems like Matt Ryan just loves targeting Austin Hooper, locking in on Austin Hooper and throwing it to him in the end zone, throwing it to him while they're marching up the field. I think Austin Hooper is in for a pretty good game, a pretty big game, actually, against the Cardinals, whose defense is an absolute sieve. Their defense is fucking terrible. I just dropped something off my desk. I'm sorry that you had to hear that, but it's okay. The Cardinals' defense is terrible, and their tight ends are also terrible. That's why we're sitting them. Now, before I get in this next game, make sure you guys do go down below and click that subscribe button if, it, if you've been enjoying this video. Now, next game here is the 49ers at the LA Rams. I'm going to be starting up two tight ends in this game. The first tight end, George Kittle. George Kittle took an L the first couple of weeks, but last week he bounced back. He has been playing. He played great last week. I've, he's hopped in the end zone, has been catching the ball. The refs didn't fucking call the touchdown back like they've been doing in the past. I think George Kittle is in for a pretty good game here against the Rams. I think they're going to try to run the ball a lot, and I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to see a lot of wide open George Kittle over the center, the middle of the field. I think George Kittle is in for a pretty good game. Now, Gerald Everett has been a guy that I I've been hating on. You guys may have noticed that. But this week, I'm all in on Everett. Two good games in a row. I think that Tyler Higby's usage is going down. Gerald Everett is skyrocketing up. I think Gerald Everett is in for a big game this week against the Niners. Now we are in for the Titans and the Denver Broncos. A absolute snooze fest of a game. And we are going to be sitting Delaney Walker. And I, by sitting, I mean starting. They should be starts. In this game, I'm starting Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker has just been an okay guy. You know, he has his fucking Walker because he's so goddamn old out there on the field. But I'm still going to start him. Same with Noah Fant. Now, the Titans defense has not been that amazing to the tight end. A lot of tight ends this week are obviously touchdown dependent towards the back end. But I do think Noah Fant is in for an okay game to warrant a start. Next game here is the Cowboys at the New York Football Jets. Now, we're going to be starting up Jason Witten in this game. Jason Witten's one of those touchdown dependable guys. But it seems like Dak Prescott has been targeting him as they are marching up the field more often now, not just that red zone target. I think Jason Winton is in for a pretty good game here against the garbage Jets defense that is dealing with a lot of injuries in their secondary. Now, we're going to be sitting down Chris Herndon. Chris Herndon is likely out, so you're going to also be sitting all of Chris Herndon's buddies, all the other tight ends, sit them all down. Next game here is the Steelers at the LA Superchargers. We're going to be setting down Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry gets the question mark because is he back? He's been practicing this, that, the other thing. Is he in? Maybe. Who knows? If it's Virgil Green, fucking sit him too. Vance McDonald, I'm sitting in this game. I don't really want anything to do with a tight end playing against the Chargers. The Chargers have been playing pretty good against the defense or against the tight end. And I just don't love Vance McDonald, especially with a third string quarterback. Likely Mason Rudolph not going to get the go, get the look this week. Now the final game here, the Monday night football matchup. We have the Lions at the Green Bay Packers. Now, I'm going to be starting up a Aaron Rodgers in this game. Aaron Rodgers looked great last week against Dallas. Now, they obviously ran in four touchdowns with Aaron Jones, so that hurt Aaron Rodgers' uh, point total. But I think Aaron Rodgers will be in for a big game here against the Lions. The Lions have... Uh, they got fucking, they were in a high scoring matchup against the Chiefs the last time they played. I think Aaron Rodgers will be able to piece apart, pick apart that defense as they say over here. I think Aaron Rodgers in for a pretty good game. Now Matt Stafford has the eh, because the Packers defense has looked pretty good. And Matt Stafford hasn't looked all, has looked pretty good, but he's not playing against any good defenses. I think you need to temper your expectations this week for Matt Stafford, but in certain situations, I'm definitely giving him the nod and putting him in my starting lineup. So thank you guys all for watching this video. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you end up enjoying this video. Make sure you go down below, click, check out my sponsor, OverlayDFS.com. Make sure you have a great rest of your goddamn day. Make sure you check out the other videos. Make sure you check out the live stream later on Thursday night. Oh, that's today as you're watching watching this. Have a great rest of your day. I love you all. Good boy.